Towards the end of 2020, I got to interview the legend motion designer and founder of School of Motion, Joey Corman, and it was awesome. After the live interview, I got a message from the School of Motion team and it went like, Rog, that was awesome. Come make a tutorial for us. That tutorial is finally out and it's about the creative process and getting over creative block. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down the style frames I made in that video. I'm going to be showing you how I applied my own creative process to making the style frames and the issues I faced while working with my own creative process. Making the School of Motion tutorial was an incredible experience. At the time I was approached, I was struggling with a lot of creative blocks and I was researching, reading books and articles, trying to find ways to solve that problem for myself. I came up with a system to explore this system for myself. I asked School of Motion to send me a brief for a style frame. They sent me this one from their course, c 4 d Accent. The brief was to create some renderings for an ad campaign for a product, SOM H2O, School of Motion H2O. A company that makes 100% recyclable plastic bottles. Amazing product. The brief was mostly free and I had a lot of room to explore around. I started the whole process by sort of trying to break down the brief and making it less vague. Trying to understand it the best I can, I broke down everything I can about the brief. From who the client is, to their goals and their beliefs, to deliverables which is full HD images for the online campaign. Most of this feels like sort of rewriting the client's brief in my own words and also adding a little bit more. I found I understood it more when I did that. Doing that gave me a good understanding of what I'm supposed to be doing in this project. I feel like a lot of times when I have creative blocks it's because I don't have a good enough understanding of what I'm supposed to be doing before I actually do it. It's important that I have a good enough understanding of what I'm supposed to be doing. Just when I thought, oh yeah, let's get started with this project. My brain starts to go off on me, so I'm constantly in this state of brain fog. I'm always not sure exactly what to do or what causes it. I'm unable to work and I'm completely sucked into the endless scroll of the internet. This happens to me every time I try to start a project and this time it's no different. I can't say I have found a way to solve this problem for myself, but unstimulating works. Taking time off my computer, taking a nap, doing chores like washing the dishes oh god i can't believe i said doing the dishes now my mom has a good excuse to make me do chores if you have a better solution to helping me cure my brain fog please leave a comment below and also leave a comment below if you find this relatable after clarifying what the brief says i went on to do a mind map the goal was to help me understand the brief and the clients even more and maybe spark a few ideas along the way. Just in case you don't know what a mind map is, according to the first result on Google, a mind map is a diagram in which information is represented visually, using a central idea placed in the middle and associated ideas around it. It is sometimes used as a note-taking technique or just a way to understand something, and on this project it was essential to me understanding what SOMH2O stands for. With the central subject being SOM H2O, I broke it down into more things like H2O which is water and water we know is essential to life or SOM H2O is finding a solution to cut plastic waste, waste in the ocean and then there is the problem of microplastics. Breaking down the central topic SOM H2O with the mind map technique helped me understand so much and I also got some ideas which I took note of while working. The next thing I did was what I like to call a visual mind map. It's like a version of the mind map with images. So it sort of goes beyond what the mind map does and actually sparks ideas. When you're doing the mind map, you get fragments of ideas, but the visual mind map makes it really clear. I got a few ideas from just doing the visual maps and I wrote them out. The notes on the map about plastic waste and the beach being a place where plastic waste from the ocean wash down inspired the idea of the product being on the beach while having tiny plastic elements around it. Looking at images of underwater life, like the beautiful corals and jellyfishes, inspired the idea of the product being underwater and we having colorful air bubbles around it. Another idea I had was the product resting on top of illuminating corals. I think that would be dope. 
The images of the lake and the ocean inspired the idea of putting the product on top of a lake. I worked on a mood board for each of the ideas I had. This was to help explain each idea better and also inspire a look. This is important in clarifying exactly what the ideas are supposed to look like. I went around Pinterest, Pegasus, and a bunch of Tumblr pages searching the internet for images to inspire different parts of each idea. After that, all that was left was picking the right idea. This wasn't an easy choice because I loved most of the ideas. But nevertheless, I picked the one I feel told a good story and also challenged my skills while providing a good solution to the brief. I chose the idea with the bottle floating on a pretty lake and bubbles around it because I thought the idea brought out the best part of the product. And the environment communicated what we are saving if we chose to use the product, which is basically this beautiful planet. Now that I have been able to choose an idea, it's on to the new evil, production. Production can be fun and annoying at the same time. With this project, it was no different. It was both fun and sometimes it was just annoying issues that I just couldn't get over. I started the production process by drawing up a storyboard. Creating a mood board earlier made drawing the storyboard a lot easier because I had a good idea of what I wanted to achieve. So I drew up a few frames for the storyboard. Okay, my drawings still suck a little, but yeah. <laughs> Here's my storyboard. So what's next is asset gathering. Based on my lake references, all my lake references add a lot of beautiful trees and I think the trees around the lake are mostly oak trees. At first I was going to use this one free blender procedural tree generator tool. Okay, I actually started using it but man, I got lazy and I just bought a pack of trees from blender market. Then I got other assets like the soil texture and the tiny grass from Megascan. God bless Epic Games. The last asset was the HDRI. I downloaded a bunch of HDRI from random places on the internet, but most of my HDRI came from HDRI Avon. The last thing was just to put everything into a nice organized folder on my computer. School of Motion provided a bottle which I adjusted a little and I added some condensation with Blender's new scattering to geometry node. Once I had all my assets, I got to the actual work. I started by creating a large surface and adding a water shader to it. Then I added the bottle and oh my god, it looked really great. Only the HDRI sucked. So I went on this journey of just trying a bunch of HDRIs and it was a pain, like it was a real pain. They all looked ugly, only one worked well and it was this one I got from HDRI Avon. It was on to creating the landscape, Blender's inbuilt landscape tool worked just fine for this. Then I added the sand texture I got from Megascans to it. The lake was finally starting to come together well. I was feeling confident and I tried to scatter trees on my landscape. Adding the trees was when I realized that I was having a serious scale issue with this scene and I probably wasn't optimizing well enough. My computer couldn't take the heat of about 500 trees being scattered on that landscape. RIP my laptop. I tried to manage the scene the best I can. I used every trick in my little book of Blender scene management. Scene management worked a little bit, it allowed it to be a little bit manageable. So that's when I started noticing that the colors of the tree or the colors of the leaves were off. So I fixed it and I made it green and beautiful. Everything was finally starting to come together well. So I showed a few friends and my mom said that the trees look like bushes. Yeah. Okay, so I started iterating from there. I was trying to find the perfect skill and the perfect number of trees to for it to be readable and for it to look like a lake. Once I found something that I liked, the next thing was adding the beautiful ripples. Did that with Blender's amazing dynamic paint and it worked just fine. Until I started noticing the awful reflection. This reflection really annoyed me and I spent two days just iterating trying to find 
ways to remove the reflection. I changed the camera lens, changed the position, nothing seemed to work. So I removed the reflection in post and that solved it pretty much. After that it was off to rendering. This is where I have to admit that I have a problem. I just can't stand anything that is in HD and I just want everything in 4K. With my potato computer it is impossible <laughs> to render that quality. That is where the guys at Concierge come in. I have to say they might be the most reliable and affordable render cloud service I have ever tried and their support is the most friendly. I had a little issue setting up this file and they helped me fix it quickly. There is a link in the description if you want to try Concierge out and they work with Cinema 4D, Redshift, Blender, Cycles and EV and they're just all around awesome. I was able to render this out in 4K and it was really really fast and really really cheap. After getting the 4K files from Concierge, I did a little edit in Photoshop and then delivered to the School of Motion guys, then showed a few of my friends and the feedback was generally great. This was a fun project that started earlier this year and I would like to say a big thank you to the guys at School of Motion for the opportunity. I am grateful. I went from admiring you guys for from afar and learning from you from afar to actually being featured on your channel and I'm really grateful for that. Thank you so much Joey for saying yes to the interview. Thank you so much Adam for all the support and guidance. Thank you Kaylee for helping out and just being a great producer. Thank you EJ for also being an amazing person. Also thank you to the guys at Concierge for helping me render. Oh, that was so many people to thank. Thank you to everyone who was just there supporting me and cheering me on. I'm so excited for what is, I'm so excited for the possibilities. So I'm just going to end this video by saying thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do. My name is Olamide Roland, aka Roger the Goat. Peace.